I am studying computer engineering, um, and my project is called Remote HCS, a mobile testing platform for chronic disease prevention. Um, so it's mostly engineers in the room now, but I'll give you guys a quick overview of how uh, engineering senior design works. So basically we have outside companies and professors develop these projects. They come in and present them to us, uh, and then we choose our preferences and give our skills. And then we're assigned to five-person teams based on these preferences and skills. So we have two clients. Uh, the first is Manish Ranjani. He's representing a public health startup in India called NanoHealth. And the second is Professor Oshama Sheikh, who is also representing a public health startup called Tabib. So the problem we are looking at is chronic diseases in India. So every year, over 5 million people die from chronic diseases in India. And if you look at this chart, you see the uh, two leading causes of death are complications due to high blood pressure and suboptimal glucose. And the thing about these two conditions is that the risk of complications can really be mitigated if they're identified soon enough. So what our client is looking at is improving the accessibility to basic health care in underserved communities in India. So their approach is they're traveling to the individual communities, setting up clinics, and conducting these diagnostic tests on the community members. So you'll see in this picture, we have a worker from NanoHealth. She's putting a blood pressure cuff on one of the community members. So she'll take um, his readings and then write them down on a piece of paper and only later add them to a centralized database of medical records. So there are some problems with their approach right now, the first of which being the testing and logging process is all done entirely manually. So this really isn't scalable when we're talking about um, trying to scale this over all the underserved communities in India, and also leaves a very large opportunity for human error when you're transcribing that much information by hand. Um, the next is since we're using manual testing devices, it requires at least some semblance of medical training for the employees to be able to administer them correctly. And we want to try to limit that as much as possible. Um, the next is that the records are not accessible from the field. So for instance, if you're taking someone's blood pressure and you want to compare it to their uh, previous readings for blood pressure, you're unable to do so and that's not very effective. And then the final thing is that there's overall just a low utilization of technology and that's something our client really wants us to leverage in our design. So basically building off of this, our goal is to design a low cost, easy to use mobile platform to automate NanoHealth's diagnostic testing and logging process. So we can break this down into four design principles. The first is it needs to be low cost. So since we're implementing this on a large scale in a low resource setting, we want to mitigate costs as much as possible in all parts of our design. Second part is we need it to be easy to use. So the workers from NanoHealth, we can't presume them to have anything more than a high school level education, and we also can't presume their technological aptitude. So we want to streamline the user experience as much as possible. The next is it needs to be a mobile platform. So since the um, workers for NanoHealth are traveling to these communities and even traveling within the communities, um, possibly going door to door, we want the entire platform to be able to fit in a small to medium sized bag and be able to set up and broken down very easily. And then the fourth point, which isn't really included in the statement, is that since we are dealing with medical records, we need the entire process to be very secure. So now moving into our design, um, starting from the top, we have our medical devices. So we're using a glucometer and a blood pressure monitor. Both of them are digital testing devices, such that, for instance, for the blood pressure cuff, all the user will have to do is place that cuff on the patient, and then they can press a button, and it'll pressurize and conduct a test on its own. And these are connected directly to something we're calling our device hub. So this is an embedded system encased in a 3D printed plastic housing. So it's going to contain a uh, Raspberry Pi microprocessor, as well as a lithium ion battery pack, and two printed circuit boards which facilitate connection to the devices. So this takes the records from the devices and then communicates them with our Android application. So our Android application is the main user interface for NanoHealth workers. It's how they facilitate the patient interaction. And so the records will come to that Android application and then it'll communicate them with a black back-end cloud server which is going to house all of our medical records so that they're accessible from anywhere, including in the field. So um, I'm gonna break this down a little further in this block diagram. Um, basically, I'll take you through this in terms of a basic uh, patient interaction. So um, NanoHealth worker will uh, begin the interaction by requesting some patient information. So things like their name, their date of birth, and uh, the village in which they live. They'll input that information into the Android application, and we'll use that to either look up their record or create a new one for them if we can't find a record for them. And so that's the only information that the worker is ever going to have to input into the Android application, and now they can begin testing. 
So once they begin testing, the medical diagnostic data will come in through the medical devices into the device hub. There it'll be packaged appropriately and it'll wait until it's um, requested from the Android application. When it's requested, it'll be sent over Bluetooth to the Android tablet. The user will be able to view that information, make sure it looks appropriate, and then it'll be communicated with our backend medical records database um, and their patient records will be updated. Then we're able to provide point of care medical recommendations based on their most recent test as well as any previous tests they've had. Um, note that those medical recommendations are not provided by us but by doctors affiliated with NanoHealth. Um, so you see we have five very distinct blocks here. So the way we broke down work for our team is we each took one of these blocks. So for me, I was in charge of writing software for our device hub for the Raspberry Pi microprocessor as well as for the Android tablet. So this can be broken down in two parts for me. So the first is I needed to write Android software that is going to be able to um, connect to the Raspberry Pi over Bluetooth and request information from it, such as the um, medical records coming off of the uh, testing devices. And then the second part of that is I needed to write software for the Raspberry Pi hub that will retrieve the information from the devices and also format it and send it over Bluetooth to the Android tablet. So the first part of that is the Android application. So this is a screen grab of the basic Android application I wrote for this. Um, from here, you can request a connection to the Raspberry Pi um, simply by con clicking the button, the connect Bluetooth button. And then after that, you can um, hit either of the other buttons to send requests for glucose or for blood pressure and the results will be displayed at the top. Moving on to the Raspberry Pi. Um, from here, we can manage the Bluetooth um, connection as well as gather the results from the devices and handle those requests coming in such that um, when we receive a message saying get the glucose or get the results from the glucometer, the Raspberry Pi will then gather the results from that glucometer and format them and then send them over Bluetooth to the Android tablet. So that overall is just a basic overview of what we're doing and what I specifically did. So this is my team here. We are Remote HCS. Um, we're really excited for our product. And if you guys would like to see more, we'll be presenting at ECE Day on May 1st. So thank you. <laughs> and questions? All right. Yeah, sure. So, do you foresee the um, design being generalizable to other devices, such as like a heart monitor, like that? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. like, like um, corporate other devices, like heart monitor, for example. Um, potentially, like, so the problem with this is finding the actual testing devices that are easily configurable to work with like an embedded system like we're using like a Raspberry Pi. Um, so that was the biggest problem we had. We originally had a larger suite of devices, but they just weren't easy to interface with uh, the software we were using. So we ended up settling only on uh, a glucometer and a blood pressure monitor. So potentially, but we'll see. Anyone else? All right. <laughs>